Hi boys and girls. Today we're going to be making a line design oak leaf. We're going to make it look kind of crazy. Um, but I thought we'd start by talking about or actually looking at some real oak leaves. So Mrs. Walker picked these up in her yard and I just wanted you to notice some things about oak leaves. They have curving lines like this that go around the outside and if we flip this over it's kind of easier to see. They have one main vein that runs right up the middle that's connected to the stem and then lots of diagonal lines that come out and each diagonal line is covered with a, like a little curve and then it kind of goes in and around. So we're going to be drawing one of these and then using oil pastels to create some line patterns. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to need is a pencil and a piece of paper and you're going to want to write your name and class code on your paper. Okay, we'll flip it over and we're going to make, we're going to start by making a diagonal line that is not touching this corner but close and not touching this corner but close. Okay, and then we're going to take and make two diagonal lines coming out from uh, this, this, the top of this. So I'm going to go diagonally this way and this way. And they're about the same length as the section that I did, that I connected it to. Then I'm going to move down almost that same amount. I'm going to move down to about here. And I'm going to do one that's maybe twice as long as this. So I'm going to make it longer. Okay, it doesn't have to be exact, but you know, about twice as long. And then I'm going to go the same thing here. But this one, I don't want it to actually touch the edge. And this one, so I might have to make that one a little bit shorter. Now I'm going to do two more short ones like this. Not really short, but not as long as this one. So here and here. And that's all I'm going to do. We're not going to do any more sections than that because then it doesn't leave us a lot of space to do our designs. And also if you did more of these you'd have to make, you'd have to come up with lots of designs. Okay so now we're going to put a little cap on the end of each one of these lines. Kind of a big cap. See how wide I'm making it? I'm not doing a little tiny cap like this. I'm doing a wide cap. So you're kind of going to go almost like an umbrella, like that. And then we're going to do the opposite curve. So that was a curve this way. Now we're going to curve this way. So we're going to do like an under curve down in here to do our design. So just a slight curve and a slight curve there to connect each one of the caps. Just do a little curve. And then this one, this one's almost going to be like a J down to that curve or that cap. Then the last thing is you're going to take um, this outside edge and just bring it down to your center line, to your stem. Okay. Now everything below this is the stem and everything above is the vein that runs up into our leaf. Okay. Put your pencil away. Don't need that anymore. And the next thing you're going to need is oil pastels or crayons. Um, you could do anything like that. It doesn't need necessarily need to be oil pastels. I like oil pastels because they resist the paint, I think, a little bit better. But you could totally, um, if you're at home and you don't have oil pastels, you can use crayons. Just be sure you put a really good thick layer. I, you kind of have to do that with oil pastels too. You have to put a nice thick layer. So what you're going to do is take your oil pastel or crayon and you're going to trace each line, each pencil line. And I'm I'm pressing pretty firmly because I want to have a good amount of oil pastel on here. I don't want to just press lightly because then it doesn't actually do what I want it to do. What, it, what we want it to do is when we go to paint this with watercolors, we want this to be like a little barrier that stops the watercolor from leaking into another watercolor. We won't have time to like wait for it to dry each time between sections. So we need this as sort of like a... Um, stop sign or a barrier that keeps it from flowing over into the other sections. Okay, once you have all of your pencil lines traced, then you're going to start with your line designs. Now, Ms. Walker has an idea sheet that you can look at or download if you're at home. You do not have to use any of these. These are just suggestions. They're ideas. If you can't think of any, I'll, hopefully you can come up with some of your own. Sometimes just looking at someone else's kind of inspires you and helps you think of others. Okay, so it doesn't matter what colors you use, but I'd like you to try and use a different color in each section and a different line design. So I'm going to start with circles in this one, and then I'm just going to put 
fill it up with circles. I'm going to pause this while I do that. Okay, I am back and I think I'm ready. Oh, I just noticed I missed one. So double check before you move on to make sure that you have a line design in every single section of your leaf, okay? I'm just going to quick put a zigzag in here because I forgot to do this one. And then we're going to do the last step, which is to take a white oil pastel or crayon, and we're going to put a little surprise in here. So our leaf, we're going to pretend like it's blowing around in the wind, so I want you to take and put some swirling, twirling lines. Um, and those lines, you won't be able to see them very good right now, but when we paint with our watercolors, it'll be a happy little surprise. Now, if you don't push very hard on this, you won't have as good of a result. Yours won't show up very good. So really put some uh, pressure on that white when you're doing it. Let me tip this up so you can kind of see, see how I did those. But you should be able to see good solid lines on there, kind of thick. If, if this is going to work. Okay, next step is you're going to need your watercolors. I'm going to set these aside. And I want you to think about contrasting colors, colors that are different. So if this is a light green, that's a cool color, but it's also a light cool color, I want to pick probably a dark color to paint over it. Um, if I have, like, say, yellow, obviously that's a warm color, so I definitely want to pick a cool color. What my cool colors are green, blue, and purple. And so any of those would be great to use on top of a warm color. My warm colors, red, orange, and yellow, would be great to use on top of um, a cool color. So I'm going to quickly wake these up by giving each one a little drop of water. And then I'm going to paint. So I'm thinking about the green. What would I like to put on the green? I think I'm going to put blue because it's a lot darker than green, especially a light green. Ooh, that's pretty. So think of a color that, that you feel like would look good and would show up. For the yellow one, I want something really dark to make that pop. I think I'm gonna do purple. Ooh, you can really see the spider web. Fun. Remember spider web, if you said you do one of those, that's just diagonal intersecting lines with curved lines in between. So I'm combi I combined some lines there. Okay, now I want a light, uh, warm color. Since this blue is a cool color, I think I'm going to use orange. Ooh, that looks good too. Okay, so this is this is really really fun. I'm going to use some yellow. I always like how yellow turns out. It really makes it pop. There we go. Maybe a little bit of red. Let's see. I need a cool color here. This is a cool color. I could put red in here. And let's see, orange is a warm color, so I want a cool one. So maybe I could, let's see, I haven't used the dark green or the green, so I think I'll put green in there. Now that's kind of dark, so I might want to take and uh, use a paper towel with my brush and absorb. So if you dip your brush, either put your brush against the edge of your dish or use a paper towel, you can absorb back some of that paint which I definitely needed to. Okay, lastly, I have this one little section left. Let's see, I haven't used, well, no, I guess I have two sections left. I need to still do this one here, the purple one. I think I'm gonna use some more yellow. Because I've done orange. There we go. Okay, now lastly, to see the surprise, go ahead and you can pick whatever color you want. I like blue for the sky because I feel like that's like what wind would look like. So I'm going to get nice, um, a lot of blue on my brush and just brush across that. Isn't that fun? All of your blue swirls. Okay. If it's if your brush is pressing down really hard, then that means you need more water or more paint. You shouldn't really ever be using anything. To find yourself pushing down on the brush, you're probably harming the brush. So add more water or more paint or both, maybe. Maybe you need both. Maybe your brush is just so dry and not full of paint that it's not working properly. Okay, when this is dry, I'm sorry, when this is done, when you're done painting this, you're going to set it on the drying rack and there we go. 